The following broadcast has been approved by Outcasted OC. Viewer discretion is advised. Incoming transmission in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. What's up guys, Megan Russ here giving you this week's Smackdown review. So let's dive right in because this was a very exciting Smackdown for me personally. So we open with Randy Orton walking out and he tries to speak to Triple H just before he walks out and Triple H was like what are you doing go on go and then he tells him to come out says how much he wants a match with Kevin Owens but Triple H comes across like he is trying to protect Kevin Owens and keeps going back and forth with him Triple H says I'm not protecting anyone I'm just doing my job um to a point where he gets pushed so much that he he kind of aggressively snaps and goes I'm not protecting Kevin Owens I'm protecting Randy Orton from Kevin Owens I don't want you getting back on the shelf I've only just got you back like it wasn't like you tore an ACL it wasn't like you hurt your ankle or broke a peck you had metal plates put into your back you were told you potentially are never going to wrestle again yet you are still here powering through and wrestling um, but yeah, it was very interesting to see Randy Orton then flip the script and be like, I didn't ask for Paul Levesque, I didn't ask for the CEO, I asked for the Cerebral Assassin, I want your perspective on what would you do, because we are both men that would go to war against each other, I want the guy who went to my house, threw me through a window, I want his perspective on how to deal with this, and... Triple H just went, I hope you know what you guys have asked, because the whole crowd are also like shouting, let them fight. And looks at him dead in the face when you want him at Crown Jewel. Alright, you've got the match. But genuinely, Randy, I hope from now till that match, you protect yourself at all times. I found that very interesting because it seemed like Triple H was trying to favour Kevin Owens. And I know they had a history in the past where Triple H did help Kevin Owens win this scenario. But Triple H very much explained how Kevin Owens let his guard down, started trusting Cody and Randy. They had a really big friendship to... In his mind, it's them two that have betrayed him, not the other way round. And I like that angle. I like the perspective they're going with that. We get into the seventh match between Melo and Melo and Andrade. There's not much really to speak about this. It's LA Knight um, as the ref. I think there was a really cool sneak hit that Carmelo did when LA Knight and Andrade were getting into it. And there was an awesome spot of Andrade flying over LA Knight. But the match very quickly deteriorates when Hayes accidentally, and I genuinely mean accidentally because Andrade pushed LA Knight into the kick. LA Knight then quickly throws Hayes into the commentary desk and then Andrade goes to fight him like, yo, why are you ruining this match? Goes to fight him and he's like, I want a genuine win. Um, he BFTs Andrade to then Hayes gets BFT'd as well. LA Knight does the count and be's like, oh, none of you win. Screw the seventh match. I'm the one that stands on top. We get a backstage segment of Naya and Tiffany having a back and forth and Naya asking if Tiffany feels any better, which was kind of an interesting um, story angle they went with because it's now like uh, Candice LeRae has been introduced and it is very interesting that Candice LeRae now being a champion but also buttering up to a bigger champion in these scenarios and trying to help Nia, yet she still lost the match. But she showed a very dominant um, way of fighting in the ring. There were a really cool spot where she threw Naomi on the outside of the ring mat. There was a cool scorpion kick from Naomi and that got also countered by Candice LeRae with a hair drag down. And we see Indy Hartwell get involved which then gave Candice... Uh, what seemed to be the edge in that situation but then lo and behold Bailey comes out even to the yards and gives a chance for Naomi to capitalize and get the win which seems like they're straying this consistent these girls having a back and forth and being involved with each other but now they've inserted Candice and Indy which is going to also be interesting to see where their alignment stays or if they're going to keep working with Nia and Tiffany is going to be kind of an afterthought we have Cody and Gunther go face to face, but I really want to talk about just something quick that was shown, which I think was really fun. Uh, Lynn Manuel Miranda, if people don't know who that is, that is the director and creator of the Hamilton musical. I'm very much into musicals that are kind of like Hamilton, 
and I've been really enjoying the epic musical and that has a lot of inspirations from Hamilton. Um, I just thought it was really cool that they showed him and hyped him up. I was like, yo, what? That's really cool. Um, but yeah, I thought I'd just bring that into part of the review of just something that piqued my interest and my other hobbies and interests merging together. But yeah, we get Gunter interrupting the woe. Absolutely perfect for when Cody Rhodes' entrance was out because when Gunther's music starts, it sounds like its own version of a woe. And I thought that was perfect. Uh, Gunther does the whole rebuttal to Cody of what do you want to talk about which I thought was unique as a heel um, speaks about how Gunther is going to leave champion uh, not Cody and Gunther just destroys him was like you didn't need to bring up your daughter um, let's be actually genuinely serious you're, all, you're trying to act like you're all about all these other people but let's get down to it like what's the actual reason you, you want to be champion and Gunther ends up showing it himself really that it's all about him he doesn't care he has the balls to say no to these media press conferences and the boss and just do what he wants as champion because he's a dominant workhorse champion and he just puts the factor of like Cody is very much a drama queen uh, Cody sells us though like genuinely I think that was one of the most fun parts of it all Cody backs the whole crowd says let's get real about it if it wasn't for the crowd if it wasn't for us, it, I wouldn't be here. It doesn't matter. Like, yes, I do it for other people, but that's the whole reason because they made me who I am now. And I love that kind of story angle. Very much hard baby face of I do it for the crowd, not just for me. And gone for being this, well, I don't give a damn about the crowd. I'm here for my own greed and my own power, which is a perfect dynamic for this situation going into a fight, especially for Crown Jewel. We get into one of the more interesting parts that I loved to finally see and they're fin I finally feel they're giving a lot of care for the women's tag division and doing a lot better with it. We saw all three GMs have an exciting announcement stating at Crown Jewel, Bianca and Jade will be in a fatal four-way against the three other teams, which is the Sky Pirates of EO Sky and Kairi Zane. We get Chelsea Green and Piper Niven and Metaphor in Lash Legend and J Jada Parker. I believe it's Jada Parker. I might be wrong on that. If I'm wrong, correct me. <laughs> but either way, I'm happy for all the girls there. I really love that this is being pushed. It gives a lot more time to the women's tag division and kind of feels like they are really trying to fix this women's tag division. So either, either way, I'm super hyped for this. And yeah. We now land to the co-main event because we'll get into that. We had an amazing match between DIY and Motor City Machine Guns. Combos after combos. Seeing Johnny Gargano and Alex Shelley back in the ring together was perfect. I loved how commentary hyped up the fact of Shelley actually taught Gargano some of their moves. And they used to be really good friends together. Like Shelley is, feels like a big brother. And then they were playing into Champa doesn't really care. Champa's like, look, you're here for me. And they, they showed that. Champa was stomping out Shelly in part of the match. Uh, the Tornado DDT by Saban looked absolutely amazing. We saw this really unique uh, double combo where they held both Gargano and Champa, and then Saban hit the drop kick to. Um, no, sorry. Yes, Saban hit the drop kick for Shelly to slam them. And I loved it. I thought this match was super dope. It does suck DIY. Haven't really had their rematch opportunity, but I understand. Um, hit while the iron is hot with Motor City Machine Guns especially for the age they are you want to push them as champions as quick as possible because um, they've got a lot of life in them still but I feel like the time is right and the time is now so it was dope um, to give them the number one contenders spot then they hit they won with the skull and crossbones finish to so Bloodline came out confronting them and it turns into an impromptu match because Motor City were like anytime any place so Solo was like, okay, right here, right now then. Let's go. And um, Nick Aldis tried to stop it. It was like, look, they have grafted for 20 years. I'm not going to have you disrespect them when they've fairly earned this opportunity. It's not going to just happen as straight away. And they were like, yo, we respect you're trying to defend us, but we can do it. Let's do it right now. Fight ensues. Really cool like situation between them because I love Gorillas of Destiny. I love Motor City Machine Guns. Having them have like a little quick match was fine. Uh, I kind of wish it went a bit longer, but I understood what was going to happen and where the narrative was playing out because we have a Jimmy Uso get involved 
knocking out Solo and making it known to then Fatu gets involved, Roman got involved to even the odds. Fatu and Solo were taken out of this situation so they couldn't stop the Tongans. Ref gets hit, so Tongans think, oh, perfect opportunity to cheat with some steel chairs. As they go and grab that, Mr. Yeet himself, Jey Uso, comes in clutch, helps out the boys, gets his spear off onto Tama Lo no, Tanga Loa, and then it gives chance for Motor City Machine Guns to once again hit crossbones and get the one, two, three. Motor City Machine Guns are your new tag champions, which I absolutely love. I am so ready to see how, what they do with the tag titles and how they're going to do their tag run because I know they are some of the most passionate guys for tag team wrestling and some of my favorite to watch. I've always been an advocate for tag team wrestling. I think it's such a unique concept and such good team synergy. And Motor City Machine Guns have always been in my top 10 of a group. So I love to see this. And we finish with Jay and Jimmy hugging it out. They re they reunite. They agree they're on the same terms. But Roman looks upset by this and bewildered, not really knowing what to do. So, it's pretty dope. We've got some cool things leading into Crown Jewel, which I'm very happy about. This triple threat match between LA Knight, Andrade, Carmella Hayes. Awesome that that's now happening. We also got this... Fatal 4-Way Women's Tag Match which I know it's in Saudi Arabia so it's going to be difficult to do the same usual way they normally would but it's awesome to see that they're getting representation and that is so many women in one match I think that's great they're moving in that direction. I was sold on Cody and Gunther from their promo work. I genuinely like that Randy vs KO is going to be super dope because we've not saw KO on TV like people have kind of listened to us said we need KO off TV so we want him more and I like that that's happened now let me know what you guys think though are you happy about Motor City Machine Guns are you a bit upset that Bloodline lost do you think Jay losing the IC title was necessary for him to reunite with everyone I personally don't I think he still could have reunited with them but I understood the direction of him losing made him decide to help out maybe but yeah let me know what you think in the comment section below if you like these videos don't forget to like comment subscribe hit that bell notification so you never miss when we go live or upload the latest video we go live every thursday for our podcast episodes at 8 p.m uk time and yeah i will see you guys all in the next review bye for now